Transcending 1999 to 2012, a series of videos eternally retold. Soul Calibur Month! Hello YouTube and welcome to Soul Calibur Month! If you're an older subscriber, you know that we have a bit of a tradition here. Every June, I make a series of videos dedicated to a video game franchise of my choice. Fire Emblem, Harvest Moon, Shinobi, Sonic the Hedgehog. If you're a newer subscriber... Where were you? We needed you! I mean, uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, th that, that's a bit of a tradition we have here, and this year I'll be looking at Soul Calibur games. Yeah, I, I, I've got a few ideas down the pipe, but let's start off with a retrospect. I, I own all five of the games, and I'm gonna go through all of them, tell you what I like, what I dislike, and, you know, just, just kinda talk about them all. And we'll be starting off with this one. Soul Calibur for the Dreamcast. Released in the year 1998, Soul Calibur is actually the second game in the series. There was a game released in Japan in 1995 called Soul Edge, but this dumb butt thinks that he can sue anything with the word Edge in it. The funniest thing is that when I, when I was researching this fool and his company, the Edge Games is more notable for being absolute scumbags than actually producing anything of worth in this world. However, Soul Edge is a Japanese exclusive game, so I'm only going to be looking at the mainline Soul Calibur games, starting with Soul Calibur, which is a very solid starting place. Released to the horrendously ill-fated Dreamcast, uh, it, you, you know, normally when I'm making a video, this is where I talk about the story, but Soul Calibur's story is hidden behind Text. Ugh. If the game doesn't tell you the story visually, I don't want to talk about it in the video since I won't have anything to put on the screen. But I will talk about the things that there actually are visual representations for. First off is the opening cinematic. It's short, sweet, and to the point. The camera sweeps through while weapons are being thrown at the ground, and then we get a bunch of close-ups of each character that's in this game. Pretty good. And then we have our modes, arcade mode and some other silly time wasters, as well as a mission mode. If you go to the arcade mode, you'll have a choice of 10 characters. And if you continue to play through arcade mode, you'll unlock 9 more. And these are just great characters, just a real solid cast. Shung Wa, Keelik, Astroth, Song Mina, Saravantes. Most of my favorite characters from the series are in this game. As a matter of fact, if you come back in three weeks, the fourth video in the series of videos is going to be my top 10 favorite characters in Soul Calibur. And it looks like six of those 10 are in this game. One favorite added in each installment. So I pick a character and I get a plane and, you know, since I'm making a series of videos based on Soul Calibur, I really had to do some introspection, see what is it that I love about the Soul Calibur series, and I believe I was able to narrow it down to three things. Number one, each character is a different weapon specialist. I mean, there are a lot of similar characters, but every character plays completely differently. I love all the different types of weapons that are filling the air. That's actually why my favorite Mortal Kombat game is Deadly Alliance. In that game, every single character was given a unique weapon, and I love that about Soul Calibur. I don't like games where every character is throwing their fists. It's, it's all just too similar. But in this game, you have a chick with a knife, a dude with a pair of nunchucks, and you have another dude who has a big old sword. A sword with an eyeball. The second thing that I love are ring outs. There is nothing more satisfying than throwing someone off a cliff. That's also why I like the Dead or Alive series, the high damage from throwing another character over a balcony, and I also love the stage transitions on Injustice. That's also why my favorite Mortal Kombat game is Armageddon. Hehehe, <laughs> you got squished. And the third thing, and I'm not sure if this is replicated anywhere else, is beating the ever-loving snot out of an opponent after you get a KO. Seriously, giving a couple extra whacks to a person, each one having an echoing scream of pain, and then performing a cinematic throw on them is just the best. And I think that Namco knows this, because it gives you like four seconds to do this. And if you start the throw before the four seconds is up, they'll actually let you finish that awesome throw. So, in Soul Calibur 1's arcade mode, you'll fight through six rounds of random fighters, and then you'll fight against your rival. And then for round eight, you'll be taken straight to hell to fight Inferno, who is this game's chameleon character. Chameleon characters, by the way, are characters in fighting games that know every single fighting style and just change every single round. 
the more you are. When you defeat Inferno, you'll get a cool little after story where some text and a couple of these sepia panels come up. My favorite is Mitsurugi's. So he takes a soul edge, and on his way home, a gang of pirates boards his ship, and they completely surround him. He smiled without fear as he looked down the barrels of their guns, and he murmured, I've had enough of duels. You're just what I needed to try out my new sword. This was the last that anyone heard of the samurai known as the mercenary in the wartime age. Probably because he died on a ship deck when he attacked a bunch of pirates who had guns. The odd mode that is worth playing is called Mission Mode, which seems kind of like a precursor to Soul Calibur 2's Weapon Master Mode, and, and honestly, that's what this entire game feels like. Soul Calibur 2 was less its own game, but more of a remastered, revamped, remade, re-awesome version of the first. The Mission Mode is very similar, and a lot of costumes are exactly the same. The only difference is that in SC2, you know, the faces look like... Uh, faces. The mission mode is fun. It has you go through a bunch of little challenges with tiny little variants. You know, like, you're taking toxic damage while you fight. Kill lizard men in one hit on this skinny bit of land. Every victory gets you cash that you spend to unlock more challenges and concept art. I greatly enjoyed this mode and honestly think that Soul Calibur 1 is one super fun experience. But let's move on to the second game. Soul Calibur 2! So for this, I will be looking at the best version of Soul Calibur 2. You see, in 2013, the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 got an HD online remake. Those amazing graphics through an HDMI cable look amazing, and it has Spawn and Hayachi! You see, when they came out, they were locked to the Xbox and the PlayStation 2, so having both of them is pretty amazing! But, if you know this game, you know there's actually one thing that makes it so you might actually want a 3x4 aspect ratio, and you might be willing to drop that high resolution. And that is... Link, here come to town, come to save the Princess Zelda. Gone and forgot away, now the children don't play, but they will, when Link saves the day. Yep, one of the greatest video game crossovers ever. The reason that I love the Soul Calibur series is because back in 2003, I got to choose a game for my birthday. And I loved X-Play's review of Soul Calibur 2, and since I owned a GameCube, my version of the game was going to be vastly superior. Look! It's the guy from Ocarina of Time! He's got the down stab and he's got the slash bombs I will admit that Hayachi plays just like a Tekken character, and Spawn's ferocity is fun to control, but nothing can compare to Nintendo's green-clad hero. Speaking of the bonus characters, Link and Hayachi are still going strong today, but what kind of a joke is Spawn? He was chosen to help promote some game in 2003, but is this really the best that Microsoft has? Seeing this nobody next to these two timeless legends is just, it's just hilarious. You know, I should look at this game sometime. I bet that would be an absolute hoot. But in addition to those three guys, this new game has new characters. As you'd expect, Cassandra's sister Sophitia, the little cutie Tom, the chameleon character Charade, and of course my boy Raphael. Anyway, in this game we have what I would consider to be the greatest opening cinematic of all time in a video game. Just look up the whole thing on YouTube and tell me that after watching it, you, you don't want to just set a greenhouse on fire. It is phenomenal. The whole game is. The graphics are a leap in quality from number one. S see, see the characters? See how they have faces? Oh, and that soundtrack. J j just indulge me for a couple of seconds. I, I, I want to listen to some of the tracks. I love the announcer and the voice acting. The announcer in the first one seemed kind of like he was bored. Astaroth was seriously wounded, but the soul still burns. But the announcer from number two is what I hope God sounds like. Youth and passion combine to create a hardened warrior. Battle one, fight! And that voice acting. The pre-battle lines are the stupid, most over-the-top, funnest-to-quote lines of all time. You Where's Game 2? Follow with me to hell! This will prevail! 
Just kidding. What does that even mean? I, I, I don't know, but I love it and I want a tattoo of it across my pasty white chest. But, as I said, this game is basically just an updated version of number one, and has two worthwhile modes. First off is arcade mode. It's like the last one, a series of increasingly difficult fights, all culminating in a faded battle with a special little cutscene beforehand. If you're Astroth, Maxi beats the snot out of you. If you're Song Mina or Young Sung, they try to talk the other person out of what they're doing. And for some reason, Raphael challenges all three of the special characters to dance. <laughs> Watch quietly and learn. After you win your fated battle, you'll once again fight Inferno. And this fight is amazing. He's just fire and bones formed around Soul Calibur. And as you fight him, every third of his health that he loses, he'll change to another fighting style. But once you kill him, you'll get another one of those endings with the sapia panels that tells you what happened to the character afterwards. The other worthwhile mode is Weapon Master. It's just like Mission Mode, but instead of buying the next challenge after each round, you just unlock a path and walk down it. It has a story, but I've never read it. I just read the fun little challenge before the match starts. The windmill is blowing you while you fight. Land 20 attacks in 20 seconds. They also have these labyrinths that you need to fight through. My favorite one is this booby-trapped one. You got quicksand, you got ice, you got fire on the sides. It adds fun to all of the battles. But if you come back for next week's video, I will do something completely selfless and insane. I'm going to, and get this, read Weapon Master's story and tell it to all of you. But with all that said, I don't think there's much more to say about Soul Calibur 2. A act actually, I do want to commend its difficulty. You see, Soul Calibur 1's AI was brain dead, and the future games had some really hard parts, but this installment just seemed perfect. It actually seems smart too. Future games always has your opponent just shield all of your all of your attacks and then and then attack. But in this game, they seem to adapt to what you're doing. If you're relying mainly on vertical attacks, they'll actually realize you're doing that, step to the side, and then strike you down. It's not much, but it's pretty cool. Alrighty, now with all of the praises sung for Soul Calibur 2, let's move on to the third installment. What a piece of junk! From the second you see the opening cinematic of this game, you you can see that it's just a tryhard. I blame the director, really. He, he probably saw how amazing Soul Calibur 2's opening was and wanted to try and remake that of his own, but but it's just not as good. The flow is all off. It's, it's, it's alright, but it's not comparable, man. It's just sad. It's sad. The only cool moment of the whole thing is like this moment with Mitsurugi and Setsuka. I, I, I like that, but the rest... Ugh. Speaking of Setsuku, let me say one of the few good things about this game. It added new characters, as you'd expect. However, while the opening tried to be like its predecessors, nothing else did. They tossed arcade mode and instead gave each character a story mode. It's pretty much identical, except you need to read a bunch of nonsense before the battles. And even if you don't want to read, it's still like 15 second load times between each battle. The load times are a joke. Even to see the characters in their costume takes forever. Even the GameCube wasn't this obnoxious. They also have Soul Arena, which is just... bad. It's a bunch of almost... Mini games? I, I I don't know. They did add a character creator, which would become a staple of the series. And I'm going to try and create the same character in each one. Not my avatar. It's too basic. Instead, I'm going to do my best to try and create my pal Purple Maple Leaf's avatar. It seems like it would be fun to try and make in a character creator. Unfortunately, this 2005 character creator sucks a lot. Uh, she kind of resembles my reference. Okay, so what else is wrong with this game? Honestly, it's just how on Soul Calibur that this game really is. Remember story mode? The cutscenes have quick time events. That's not Soul Calibur. You know what else isn't Soul Calibur? The only hope this game has to redeem itself as a Soul Calibur game is the new mode. Chronicles of the Sword. It's a mode where you take your customized character and... Next we will be looking at Soul Calibur 4 for both systems. So let's jump 
Back to the seventh generation was great for Soul Calibur. Look at all of these character models! I mean, they didn't even try with the opening video, but these graphics are beautiful! And the game had a crossover with Star Wars to promote this weirdo, The Apprentice, and his upcoming game, The Force Unleashed, which is actually a pretty awesome game. I, I, I also need to take a look at this one at some point. My copy was signed by Darth Vader. But he's not the only Star Wars character we have. We also have Jedi Master Yoda, and he is a ton of fun to play as. He's so short, like 70% of the attacks just, just miss him, and he wails on everyone in the game. He's a lot of fun to play as, but... He's exclusive to the Xbox 360. And that means that the PlayStation 3 is the superior version in every way, shape, and form, because they have... Darth Vader. Oh, this makes me want a real Star Wars fighting game. And and don't tell me about Terakaze. I said the word real. This this was only a fever dream. I, I, I can't accept that this existed. It's pretty awesome, even though a little weird, to have the Imperial March and the Duel of Fate song in a fighting game. But you know what's really weird? Darth Vader dual-wielding swords that aren't lightsabers. And even stranger than that is a young girl wearing Imperial Chinese clothing inside of a Star Destroyer. But let's take our eye off the Star Wars part of this game for a second. Well, what do we have that's worth playing? Well, we've got arcade mode, which is always great, but you don't get any character development at this time. If you want to hastily cobble together uncanon cutscene, there's not a whole lot that you gotta do. You gotta play the story mode, and it's like five chapters. Each chapter you need to fight like three people at once, and then at the end you get a cutscene, like this one with Raphael. So he got himself the Soul Edge, and he thought he could make a wish on it, but, but then when the wish didn't come true, he just uh, straight up murders his servants. What the heck was that, Raphael? Why'd you do that? They were your friends! If it wasn't for the lady, you would have lost on Chapter 3, man! Also, what's with this costume? Are you like a vampire now? Also, on the story mode, on Chapter 3, you will run into these characters. When you beat them, they will become playable. However, they're just skins for, like, other characters. For example, we get this one girl. She looks just like Silent from Metal Gear, but she has two katanas, and that gives her Cervantes' moveset, including her finishing move, where she shoots a foe. That makes sense for Cervantes. His sword is a gun. Her sword is a katana. There's another character that's even weirder than her. Her name is Angle Fear. Tell me if you can see what it is that makes her so odd. She's an anime character in this world where everyone else is rendered realistically. Why, why does she have anime eyes? But in addition to these fake characters, they added some real ones too, as you'd expect. Including one of my favorites, Miss Hildegard. So what other modes have we got here? Tower of Lost Souls is a feeble attempt at a mission mode where you go up steps with a small team and need to fight between 1 and 10 people without any healing. There's nothing real special about this mode though, so I don't really care for it. How's the character creator? Well, it's getting there, but not yet. I gave her John Lennon glasses and genie shoes, so it's pretty much accurate. However, the hat needs a little bit of work. What else is there to say about number four? It's a very solid entry in my opinion. Great characters, great modes, but it is actually much harder to grab your foe after you KO them, so it loses some points for that. But with that said, let's move on to Soul Calibur V. Soul Calibur V. This game is bad. It's so bad. I don't know if it's bad as three, but ah, uh, gosh. Let's get started with a positive. You can play as Ezio Alatore. That's fun. I mean, he feels super cheap since he has a, like a really easy to use projectile move, but hey, it, it, it feels fun to use it on computers. Gotcha. And no one remember your name. Let's talk about the other characters. They took out a lot of characters. As you explain, what? And now, a reading of the names of our fallen heroes. Taki. Sophitia. Cassandra. Talim. Young Sung. Setsuka. Zazamil. <laughs> Good riddance. Songmina. Rock. Amy. And best girl, Shagwa. 
Who the flip is Lexia? This is Sheng Wah's daughter, but she doesn't even attack the legs. Sheng Wah would stab you in the chest and then stab at your legs. Lexia just stabs them in the chest and calls it a day. You have failed your daughter, Sheng Wah. Is, is this what you meant when you said justice will prevail? Just kidding! Why would you take characters out for a sequel? Oh, hey guys! Kulik is back! Why the frick is he the chameleon character? They added some characters too, but I hate all of them. You meet them all in the story mode, but the story is so bad. It is so bad that in two weeks I will be making its own video. Just know that I call it Adolf Hitler because it is the worst thing to ever befall humanity. However, after you beat the story mode, you unlock Legendary Souls. Is this a mission mode where little tweaks are made to make each fight special? No! It's fighting computers on a higher difficulty! Now I know what you're thinking at this point. You're probably thinking, Chet, this game sounds really, really bad. Is there even one redeeming thing about it? And to that I'd say... Yes. The character creator. Soul Calibur V has the greatest character creator I have ever seen. I mean, the only ones I can recall right now is like Bethesda and The Sims, but I love the amount of freedom that you have here. So uh, apparently I made this game back in 2014. Check it out, I made Space Dandy and Scarlet. I, I really love the star I was able to put on his back right here. Another game that I liked back in 2014 was Fire Emblem Awakening. Look, it's a Wayne and Custom 2. Ah, what a gal Custom 2 is. All right, let's make PML. Huh, do I go for the creepy cat mask or the ears? Uh, I think I'm actually gonna go with the ears because I can actually give her square frame glasses this time. All right, throw on her signature genie shoes, add the purple clover leaf and give her a giant ax and perfect. Wait, hold on, she needs some black stripes. They're going horizontally. Ha ha! I love this game's character creator. I went ahead and made Strain 42 and Blazing Knight. Uh, sorry man, I, I had to go with a Crusader helmet. And for some reason, I made Don Bluth Rasputin from the 1997 film Anastasia. I also went and made Cad Bane from Star Wars to show you how amazing the character creator is. Okay, so I can dip his skin dark blue, but what about the eyes? Cad Bane has bulgy red eyes. Well, check this out. I select an apple, I make it as small as possible, and then I shove them into his head. This game really allows you to have self-expression if you've got creativity in this character creator. But aside from that, Soul Calibur V is a pile of trash! So, that's the Soul Calibur series. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, rank them real quick. A free, free top five for you. Hey, the game is top five Soul Calibur games! Here, here, here they are. The bottom of the list, number five, is going to be Soul Calibur 3. Now, now, while it didn't commit the unforgivable sin of removing characters, it did put quick time events in a fighting game. Uh, the number four spot is going to go to Soul Calibur 5. Th this, th that game is bad. Really bad. But I do absolutely love its, soul, uh, its character creator. Uh, number three is going to go to the first Soul Calibur game. Really, just a sol solid game. Solid all the way through. Uh, nothing really phenomenal, but great groundworks. Number two spot is going to go to Soul Calibur 4. Uh, the graphics are beautiful, but it, it, it doesn't do anything wrong. It's, it's really solid. But the number one spot goes to Soul Calibur 2. What a fantastic game. The music is phenomenal. The graphics are good. The, 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 the voice acting is hilarious. And, oh, also, Link. 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 So, if you hated that video, be sure to hit that dislike button and unsubscribe because uh, I'll, I'll be coming back next week with a coverage of this game's Weapon Master. After that, I'll be looking at Adolf Hitler, and after that, three weeks from now, we'll be doing a top ten for my, my top ten favorite characters. See you then!